What's up, witches? It's Luna here, looking at the new moon chart for Scorpio season 2022. I'm going to do the new moon and the full moon charts back to back, separate videos, but so you can listen to them back to back because Samhain season, Scorpio season, um, Samhain in the northern hemisphere, Beltane in the southern hemisphere, are really all about life and death. And so it because the new moon occurs about a week before Samhain and the full moon about a week after, it they very neatly bookend this season of transformation. So um, let's take a look. This new moon is on October 25th, and it occurs on Tuesday, 6.48 a.m. in the Eastern Time Zone. So adjust for your time zone, please. We have um, in the last full moon chart... We've got the inner planets, the personal planets, playing big parts in these charts, which just means that even though we're looking at this, you know, overall transits, um, they do affect us in a personal way. And we've got that going on here again. So let's start, as we always do, with the macro down at the bottom right, where um, we've got our little graphs. And the last couple charts, we've had a real low score on water. Um, and look what happens when we come into Scorpio season. I believe the last chart was a really high scoring air. Now we are into Scorpio season. Water is coming to the fore. And that's not necessarily the case just because there's a new moon and a water sign. If we've got the planets distributed in the other elements heavily enough, um, water might not be the strongest element that shows up here. But in this chart, it clearly is. Where we have a shortfall is in fire. And that might be a good thing with, with emotions sticking out in great big lumps. Um, as far as the modes go, we have, uh, we're short on mutability. And that's a great description of Scorpio. Strong on emotion, short on flexibility. Uh, cardinal and fixed are equally prominent. And so... Again, good energies for getting things started and seeing things through. Not a lot of good energy for changing course. So let's take a look at the chart itself. We've got the sun moon exactly conjuncting Venus, all at two degrees of Scorpio. So the reset here with this new moon, of course, Scorpio is about transformation. It's, and that transformation specifically is death and rebirth. So we are looking at what has died and gone away and what we have harvested. This is harvest season in the Northern Hemisphere. In the Southern Hemisphere, it's planting season. So the theme here is um, if it's winter sea or fall season, it's life in death. So as the seeds or the plants are dying in the fields and we're cutting down the crops, we have the seed, which is the promise of new life in the spring. If you're in the Beltane side, it's death in life. And in this case, um, the seed represents the death of last year's crop. And it also kind of represents, you put that seed into the ground. So you're kind of like burying it. And from that springs new life. So we are dealing with the, the whole death and life, life and death theme, regardless of which hemisphere you're in. So the reset here is all about what we are ready to let go of or what we are being asked to let go of, whether or not we are ready. Um, with Venus thrown in there, it's a reset of our values. Our value system is absolutely inseparable from this new moon. And that is the things that we like, the things that we love, the things that give us pleasure, and how we handle those things, how we express our affection towards the things and people that we love. So our value system has to be upfront. And then um, we've also got... Uh, Mercury in an in conjunct with Neptune here. So what I'm focusing in on here is the inner planets. So looking at our how things affect us personally. Of course, Sun, Moon are the biggest personal planets. But we've got Mercury still in Libra in conjuncting Neptune. So this is where we have to make an adjustment about our delusional thinking. Where are we indulging in idealism and fantasy that really isn't serving that value system because Mercury in Libra here is also ruled by Venus. 
So how can we adjust that? How can we look at our own thoughts and see where we maybe have been slapping on the rose colored glasses and getting a little bit idealistic about things, not dealing in reality? It's a challenge for sure, but inconjuncts represent challenges to us because we have to adjust. So another adjustment represented here is the inconjunct between Mars and Pluto. Now these two planets in conjuncting each other are ruling this new moon Venus stellium. And this is as true a stellium as you can get. It is exact. Um, so the adjustment here is between Mars being what we're passionate about, what we're driving for, what motivates us, what we have a boner for, okay, our uh, sexual energy, our libido. And Pluto is about to the death. Pluto is extremism. How far are we willing to go to get the things that we desire? So while Venus is affection and pleasure and what we love, Mars is desire. So we have to make an adjustment here between the things that we're really wanting to go after and how far we're willing to go. Um, pulling back from extremes. And it, it also is an indicator that we're being presented with these extremes in the events that are going on globally. Um, it certainly is a describer for the threat of nuclear war that has been hanging over us, war being represented by Mars, Pluto representing nuclear energy. So yeah, here's the adjustment. How far are we willing to go to be the only one, which is Pluto? You know, Pluto is extremes and um, it's inevitability. So take that as you will. But this, you know, we, we just look at all of these personal points getting really brought into sharp focus in this chart. Uh, let's see what else we have here. It's, it's a waning aspect or it's a separating aspect, but we do still have the Mars-Neptune square. Um, and that talks about our energies dissipating um, and kind of having motivations that are based in idealism or based in illusion and delusion. And that causes us problems. So, and it can also be on a much more practical level, um, the escapism, really aggressively going after escapism um, in any form, whether it's a good form or an unhealthy form, such as drugs and alcohol. Um, so we have to address that. We have Mars also, nope, I'm not going to talk about that. It's applying, oh, maybe I will, because it'll probably be in by the time of the full moon. We've got Mars applying to square Jupiter. And again, this means we are prone to going way overboard. Remember that Jupiter expands. Jupiter at zero degrees of Aries ruled by Mars. So it says that we're just going, willing to go way overboard and we need to learn to set boundaries within ourselves, going back to the stellium in Scorpio based on our value system, based on, you know, who we are and how we feel. Uh, we have Jupiter also making an in conjunct to that stellium. So, oy vey. Sun, Moon, Venus, and Scorpio. And, you know, with Venus and Scorpio, this brings in the desire principle too. It says these things give me pleasure and I really want to go after them because Mars and Pluto rule that Venus. And in conjuncting Jupiter, this is where we have to actively grapple with and adjust where our boundaries lie, how far we're willing to go, to go after the things that give us pleasure. But overall, this is a reset, and we have to remember that. We still have the um, Saturn-Uranus square. Um, the north node doesn't really come in there because it's four degrees off of um, Uranus, which it's closer to than, than the degree of Saturn. Um, but still, we're still in that struggle between the new and the old, the innovative and the traditional, the um, 
the new age and the, the old age dogma. So, I mean, what a descriptive chart for everything that we're going through. We have Chiron in this chart hanging out all by itself, um, unaspected. I mean, it's in parallel aspect to the North Node, but that's weak. It's even though it's a, the exact degree. Um, well, I guess let's look at it. I've never really looked at parallels um, in my practice because it is such a minor aspect, but we have both uh, Chiron and the North Node. Chiron representing the nature of our woundedness and here in Aries, we've talked about it again and again, those cultural wounds from our warlike nature, from this us against them uh, world that we live in. And the North Node in Taurus talking about the feminine way of uh, nurturance, the way of pleasure and the way of practicality being the way forward here. So, you know, when we look at those two, technically, well, I mean, they give the North Node a square to, to Saturn, which I would not, um, as it's separating in five degrees off. But, you know, our woundedness does have a huge say in how we move forward. And here with that unaspected, um, unaspected planets uh, and asteroids and such provide an opportunity because what it says is that that planet is not affected by any of the others. So it can sort of operate in its purest form. And sometimes we can really get things done and those become a strong point. So I'm going to say that Chiron really starts to stand out here and be recognized as here's how we have traumatized ourselves. Here's how we have wounded ourselves. And then that North Node also at 13 degrees in Taurus says the way forward is the way of Venus. You see how Mars rules that Chiron? Venus rules the North Node. So moving away from the Martian way, the martial way, martial law, militaries, um, you know, military budgets far outstripping budgets that take care of people in pretty much every culture on the planet. Um, and the North Node says the way forward is through innovation sitting next to Uranus like that, but also through the way of Venus. What about values? What about how we take care of other people? Think of Taurus as the Empress card, providing, nurturing, feeding, caring for, loving. That's the way forward here. So this new moon in Scorpio, think about what you want to hit the reset button on. How can you start anew by letting go of what is dead and gone? reassessing your value systems, coming to terms with um, the role that desire plays in your life. Do you get lost in it, that Mars squaring Neptune? Do I get lost in my desire to the point that I'm willing to roll over anybody to get there? That's the Mars-Pluto in conjunct. So let's do an adjustment between that strong desire nature that we have and how far we're willing to go for it. And then the other adjustment between um, how delusionary our thinking might be. Um, it's reality check time for all of us, really. And that Uranus-Saturn square is still calling us to um, reckon with the new versus the old. So think about how in your personal life you can reset your value system, really look at it and say, this is how it served me in the past. Is it working for me? Check in with your thinking, straighten out your thoughts, deal with, you know, things in the light of day and what the reality of them is rather than what the potential is. Neptune can cause you to focus on the potential of something rather than the reality of it. So that in conjunct is check your thoughts, make sure you're dealing with the reality and not the if. Um, I side, side story here. I worked a job once where I was managing a person who um, was just fucking up all over the place, not showing up for shifts. And it was just bad, bad, bad. And I went to the, um, the owner of the company and said, we got to do something about this. But she and her daughter really liked this person, but we really like her. And if she can do this and if she can do it, and if, and I finally said, will you please tell me 
what assets she brings to this company without using the word if. And they couldn't do it. So the if is represented by Neptune here. And let's get the ifs out of the way and look at the reality of things and see how you can use this powerful new moon in Scorpio to um, say goodbye, to bury the old and the things that no longer serve you, the outworn parts of your value system, your old ideals that are really taking you um, down a disempowered path and taking you out of the here and now and real life and into uh, fantasy. And we will hit that reset button together. Please let me know what you think about this. Um, very, very interesting chart. I hope that you have good ritual planned for Samhain and your ancestor altar. Certainly Venus here says that everything needs to be based in love beyond a shadow of a doubt. Let's hit the reset button base with our roots firmly in love. Thanks for hanging out with me, you guys. I'll see you next time. Till then, this is Luna. Blessed be.